Hello, my dear students. Welcome to the session number 33. Yes, today we are going to deal with the process uh, basics in that how to control the jobs which are all in see many jobs will be there so we will be knowing how to control those jobs and also how to make it like uh, to execute later and also the timing process how to manage all this we will learn in this session okay so before that we will have one small recap that is in the previous class we just learned about like what are all the states of the process, what is orphan process, zombie process and also like how to get your, uh, get your process to uh, run in a background. So by using the ampersand operator, no hub commands and uh, make your process as a low priority so that it can run at a, a particular time. So by using nice value. And also if at all if you feel like if you want to kill the process or to terminate the process you can use the kill command okay so by looking on to all these topics we will move on to today's that is how to control the job see as you are hearing that a job is the name which is given to a group of process means a group of process is there so totally we call them as a job. So the easiest way of creating a job is to run a pipeline of two or more commands. So using two or more commands we can create a group of process. Okay, let me consider that you expect a job to complete in 10 minutes. Okay, in within 10 minutes you want to complete the job but it is keep on going and dragging up to and half an hour. So what you will do on that time, if you kill the job now, you will lose lot of work, isn't it? Yes, if you are using the C shell, con shell or even a bash, you can use their job control facilities in order to manipulate the jobs. Okay, so here what we are doing, we are using the job controls in order to manipulate the jobs which is run name by using the job control facilities. So what are all they? These are the few job control facilities. That is, relegate a job to the background, which is the job you feel like it has to be run at the background, then you can go for BG command. And if you want to make it into a foreground, FG command. And you want to list it out all the active jobs which is running on your system go for jobs and if at all if you want to suspend the current job to your foreground then go for control Z and if at all you feel that you want to kill that uh, process or terminate the process then you can easily use the command which is called kill okay which we have already seen in previous session okay Coming on to today's, that is BG. What is this BG? So, it's nothing but background. It stands for background. So, this is a process control command which is resumes or suspend the process while you are keeping them running in the background. You are not terminating it. And then you know, a job na mugustilla. In fact, adana munde ortarodana hinda ke karsodo. Okay, so you are just suspending it and you make them to run at background. User can run the job in the background by using a ampersand symbol. That's it. So ampersand symbol at the end of the command. Okay, so this is how, this is the syntax of your PG group that is PG. In that bracket you just uh, write job. Okay, here you have so many options like the character percentage introduce a job specification. It shows what is the job which you are running it and by job with it, it's process ID number or you can even use this following symbol combinations. For example, percent with number, use the job number such as percent one or percent two or even you can use a percent string 
where the string whose name begins with suspended command such as percent command name here or pink or even you can use the operators like percent plus or even percent percent refers to the current job and percent negative which will refers to the previous jobs so these are all the uh, like we have so many specifications and by these combination we can get the job listed out okay next coming on to what do you mean by this foreground see foreground command means what whenever you just open a ms word or ms excel or whichever the application software you want to use it if you open it so at a time you can work it on only one application isn't it even though if you have opened three applications simultaneously what it will do it will show only one application on the foreground and the rest two will be on your taskbar showing that it is running at the behind okay so this is how like foreground and a background we can tell it so what we are doing over here we are just bringing our background job to a foreground in by using this command yes fg command which moves a background job in current shell environment into the foreground okay so how it will do it it will use the job id parameter to indicate a specific job in order to run in the foreground if this parameter is not supplied see here if i have not given any job id then fg command it uses the job most recently suspended placed in the background if at all if you are not mentioning anything and if you are just simply running fg command means automatically what it will do it will just gives you the recently suspended okay the whichever you have suspended by using bg command that will be on the your foreground okay look at this syntax fg command with the percentage job so here what you are doing options percentage job which specifies the job that you want to run in the foreground so on the foreground whichever you want to run that will be on your system okay next topic that is jobs command jobs means what here you are saying that whatever the jobs which is there i want to list it out when you want to list all the jobs to be uh in a one single file then you can go for a jobs command so jobs command is used in order to list out the jobs that are running in the background and the in the foreground both the things both tier it will work for so whichever it is running in the background and foreground if you remember if we uh, type like control alt uh, delete so it will gives you a task bar isn't it in the task bar we can see uh, which of the process which is running on the system and also uh, which is, uh, which process is running at the back and for uh, it will be displaying if the prompt is written with no information after giving the command if your prompt is returning with a no information then there is no jobs present that you have to mind it okay all shells are not capable all shells are not capable running this command this command is only available on cs uh, csh that is c shell bash tc shell and k uh, ksh shells okay so very uh, like very few shells can recognize this jobs command so syntax for that is jobs and job so options you have plenty of options over here see here minus l which list out the ids in addition of the normal information minus n list only process that have changed status since the last notification and minus p list process ids only so here minus r restrict output to the running jobs minus s restrict output to the stopped jobs okay so next is like suspended a foreground job so like i have like i am keep on working and if i want my 
uh, foreground job to go to the back side. So what we will do? We will just minimize it and we will use the another application, isn't it? Say, uh, yeah, in our Unix, what we will do? If you have invoked a command and the prompt has not yet returned, so you have called for a command and the prompt is not at all uh, like written. If the prompt is not visible on your terminal, you can't type any kind of command. Okay, so you will be struck over there itself. On that time, when you feel that you have struck for a longer time, on that time you can press Ctrl Z. So what it will do, you will get a message like this. 1 plus stop. So what it is like, whatever the spelling, you this is the last activity which you set for. So that has been stopped. So observe that. The job has not been terminated over here. Okay. So it is only sus uh, suspended. That is stopped. You can use the BG command in order to push it on to your current foreground job to the background. Okay. So how this? I will say BG. So this is how your single process job will work. While giving BG you can see that is ampersand is given over here. So, it will say that a single process job. The ampersand at the end of the line which is indicating that job is now running in the background. See, as soon as you give like this, it will uh, it will be not stopped. In fact, it is suspended and it makes the file to be run or command to be run at the background. Okay. First, first and foremost, what you want to look into? You have to look whether it is given with a ampersand. So a foreground job goes to the background first with the control Z and then with the PG command. So this is how your background things will be working. Okay. So coming on to the next topic that is to kill a job. So what is this kill a job? We have already seen in the previous session. The kill command is the command line utility for terminating process. By default, it is like kill command will suspend the process, okay, or terminate the process. It is normally actually a shell built-in shell built-in command, meaning the command is called from the user shell rather than an external executable shell program, okay. So by default, your kill command will send a term signal to a process, allowing the process to perform any cleanup operation before shutting down. So before shutting down, you have to clean all the things, isn't it? So that will be done by your kill command. So the kill command also supports sending some any other signal to a process. So the kill command is used primarily in order to Terminate or restart the process. So, what is the command? Kill dollar one, where it is killing the first background job with sick term. Okay, so first job will be stopped. Okay, next coming on to ATN batch that is execute later. In our Unix, it provides a sophisticated facilities in order to schedule a job. So that to run on a specified time of a day. So if your system is loaded with very, uh, like it, it varies greatly throughout the day, then it makes sense to schedule the jobs like uh, less urgent jobs or very uh, like uh, high priority jobs at the time when the system is overhead on to working. So whenever your system loads is down, on that time you can schedule for few jobs, isn't it? If you have a lot of job, you can schedule the jobs by based on their priorities. So on that time, we can use this AT and batch command, which makes such scheduling possible. Okay. So what is this AT? AT is nothing but a one-time execution. It is a one-time execution. It takes as its arguments the time the job is to be executed and displays the AT at your prompt. So you can see the input over here. We supply from your standard input AT 1408. AT, this is our file. Okay. Control D. 
so we have saved it so commands will be executed using your bash job what is the job job number at sunday that is december 29 at what time it is 14:08 so 2002 on that particular day at a particular time you are making it to run so what you are doing the job goes to the queue at at uh, 2 2 o'clock 8 minutes uh, afternoon today the script file that is your empawk2.sh will be executed it shows the job number okay the date and time the date as well as the time of scheduled execution so the job uh, number is derived from the number of seconds that have been elapsed since the epoch okay it's the most meaningful method of making such numbers unique across several years so it does not indicate the name of the script to be executed that is something the user has to remember so just remember the standard output and standard error of the program are mailed to the user who can use any mail reading program to view it see many times what it will do we will assign the work to a particular machine and we will forget it even though the job has been done or not done we will be not knowing at all so with our pressure we will be forgetting about what the pro, uh, job has been assigned to the system on that time we have few like options like minus f option in order to take commands from a file and also minus m option in order to mail a user about, uh, to know about the status of the job so here what instead of uh, like uh, using the other uh, what we will do minus f option so here we will use this for any like any error messages which has been generated when you execute a program will be in the absence of your redirection continue to be mailed to the user so whatever the job completion after the job completion or if at all any error is there that will be mailed to the user so as soon as you use the minus l option so at also offers the keywords now noon midnight and tomorrow so these are all the keywords which can be used and it accepts the symbols also just look at here the symbols to act as an operator and the words that can be used for this operators like hours days week month year many things can be used as you are uh, parameters okay so just check it out 8015 it is a 24 hour format assumed so at 5 pm at noon see here we have used noon at now plus 1 year at 12 hours today so uh, 3.8 pm plus one day current time after one year at 15 december 18 at 9 am so you see here many things you have done the month name and the day of the week when you start or so uh, everything you have just mentioned over there must be either fully spelled out or at least abbreviations to three letters that should be given out so jobs can be listed with at uh, at minus l command and removed with that uh, at minus r you can remove or you can assign okay so one example which i want to give see we will be all using our mobile phones on the smartphones what we will do we will store or we will save the birthday of our dear ones isn't it even though we have forgotten automatically we have already stored with an alarm so what the uh, smartphones will do it will just gives us an uh, alarm and says that today your friends birthday which would we have saved so this is how it is working see we have assigned it the job should be done on particular on so on day and not the uh, some time so that is what it is doing okay so the best example is that one okay next coming on to batch that is execute in a batch queue whatever you are executing 
let me collect it and then I will let me schedule for a later execution. So on that time I can use a batch command. So what is this batch command? Also schedules jobs for later execution but unlike uh, jobs are executed as soon as the system load permits. So it will wait for a particular time period when up to when when your system load permits. So if at all it feels like it is heavy jobs to be accumulated though automatically it will start its execution. So the command does not take any arguments that you remember. So here we, uh, yeah, the command is not going to uh, take any kind of arguments and also use any internal algorithm in order to determine the execution time. So this prevents many of the CPU hungry jobs from running at the same time. So now we will move on to the response of batch is similar to what? So AT, whatever the AT you have used the same way. So batch that is less than whatever the file you want to give. So commands will be executed using the same batch. So here it will give you the job, job number and also it will schedule. Any job scheduled with a batch goes to a special at a queue from where it can be removed by AT minus R. So a minus R is for remove. It is an option for AT. Okay. Okay. So coming on to cron. That is running jobs periodically. Periodically it has to keep on run. So what is this? The PS minus E command always shows the cron demo on running. Whenever you just type the PS command, you can see many demos will be running. In that, if you mention minus E, it will show cron. This is like a unique system's chronography ticking away every minute. Each and every minute, it will be always checking the machine for a new new process or whatever it will keep on checking with the things cron which is executes like uh, cron executes programs at regular intervals and it is mostly dormant but every minute it wakes up and looks into a control file so like unlike your AT and batch that are meant for only one time execution but cron is not like that it will executes at a regular intervals. If you say that for each and every hour, it has to check for a process means each and every hour of a day, 24 per 7 in that, each and every hour, it will keep, keeps on run that program and then it will uh, just go for a sleep. Okay. So that is the beauty of this cron command. Okay, the cron tab file. So here there is a one file which is maintaining all the activities. So the cron tab file which is in a var spoon cron cron tabs for instructions to be performed at that instant. So someone should be there or something should be there structure in order to store all the things, isn't it? So that is done and taken care by your cron tab. After executing them, it goes back to sleep only to wake up the next minute. So for the next minute, it will go back. A user may also be permitted to place a cron tab file named after her login name in the cron tabs directory. So what it is telling, if it can store it after its name, login name. So suppose if I have logged in my system uh, by name, Madura. So it has to place his cron tab commands in the file like var spool cron cron tabs bar Madura. Okay. So this location is, however, it is purely a system dependent that you don't forget. It is a system dependent. Okay. So here it will take one specimen way in order to enter this things you can look like this see here 00, 0 up to 10 17 star 3 6 9 12 5 find newer dot last time print backup list this is our one entry or the event which has to occur cron which has to occur periodically now we will see what exactly it is saying each 
line contains set of six fields separated by white space. You can see. Okay. So, the complete command line is shown in the last field. So, what is the complete command? So, the complete command is shown in the last field. So, all these fields together determine when and how often the command will be executed. So, cron what it will do? It uses an unusual number matching system for matching fields. A set of numbers are delimited by commas and you can also see this star, isn't it? Which is used in any of the first five fields. See here, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. This is the first five fields. So, where it is saying that uh, like command to be executed every period depending on the field where it is placed. Okay, so this is the activity which is doing find. Hmm? So now we will see like what these fields will tell. The first field that legal value is 0 to 59. So up to 0 to 59. What is this? This is specifying the number of minutes. Of course, we all know that it is 60 minutes. So that's why it is saying that limit is 0 to 59. After the hour when the command is to be executed, it shows the number of minutes. The range is in our example, what we have taken the range is 0 to 10. Means it is scheduling its execution every minute in the first minutes of the hour. So this is what every However, in that the first 10 minutes will be dedicated. So, the second field that is 17. 17 means it is 5 p.m. It is in a format of 24 hours. So, indicates the hour in 24 hour for format for scheduling. Okay, for scheduling it is taking for 24 hour format. So, here its legal value is 1 to 24. The third field, the third field is nothing but the month. So, it is depicting the month. So, the third field's legal value is 1 to 31 which controls the day of the month. This field over here, it has been given as an asterisk. That is star. Read with the other two which implies that the command should be executed. Every minute, so every minute it has to get uh, like executed and also for the first 10 minutes starting at 5 p.m. So it is telling that every minute, every time within the 10 and also at 5 p.m. So the fourth field that is telling 3, 6, 9, 12. So, uh, 3, 6, 9, 12. So, what it is telling? It is the specifying the months. Okay. So, months legal value is 1 to 12. In our example, here it is specifying the months like 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay. So, next coming on to the fifth value. That is the fifth field which is said to be as Friday. Why? It indicates the days of the week. Okay. So, we have a seven days. So, 0 to 6 is our legal value. So, this is what it will depict. Now, tell me. What is the frequency of your execution of this command then? So, you have shown all the details like minutes, hours, month and also specifies in which month it has to get executed and also the day when it has to execute. Then what it is indicating that this file, yes. Now we will analyze. So even though the third field that is indicates executing every day, 
every day it has to execute why because you have given an asterisk right but the fifth field that is friday which overrides your third field okay so this is how it limits the execution only on to every friday it is overriding this asterisk and it makes it to run it only on friday the find command which you have given that will thus be executed every minute every minute in the first 10 minutes first 10 minutes after 5 pm 5 pm you have mentioned after 5 pm every friday of the month march june september and december of every year so this is how the backup list is taking it out okay so backup list are we are telling that whether the backup is taken find it out that find which makes you to periodically run on a particular condition which you have given out okay so this is our cron values specific like one entry how to read it coming on to cron tag so how to create a cron tag file so cron tag command you can also create your own cron tag files by using this vi in the format like shown previously vi editor use it Uh, by using that you can you will need uh, then need to use this cron tag so you can specify your own command and you can use it hmm? use the cron tag command in order to place the file in the directory containing cron tag files for cron to read the file again once again to read the file again cron tag cron.txt so which contains cron commands so here it is uh, it is showing that if kumar is running this command means a file named kumar will be created in where we have already mentioned var spool cron cron tabs containing the content of cron.txt in this way different users can have their own cron tabs which is named after them only as their user ids Okay, it is also possible to enter cron command by using a cron tag with the option minus e. Okay, so in cron tag calls up the editor, define the editor variable. We can see like uh, the contents of your cron tag file with cron tag minus l and remove the cron tag minus r. Cron is mainly used by the system administrator to perform housekeeping chores. so like removing outdated files or collecting data on system performance or it is also like extremely you can useful uh, you to periodically dial up on an internet mail server in order to send or receive the mail so this is what you can do it so next topic is time that is timing process so when you have a multiple versions of a program first and foremost you have to find out how efficiently your system is running isn't it so how these system resources are used and all in order to know all this we are just going to have this time command where it accepts the entire command line to be timed as its argument and does its work it also executes the program in order to display the time usage of the terminal so you can see over here the usage of the terminals are all shown this is our syntax this actually enables our programmers to tune their programs to keep the cpu usage at an optimum level so always your cpu will be busy and it is optimized and it is optimum utilized okay so here you can find out uh, the time taken in order to perform the sorting operation okay by proceeding the sort command with the time see here time command along with that we have used sort so here you can see you got a three outputs isn't it that is real which is of 0 minutes 20 time 8 11 seconds so user and also systems so what is this real 
So this real time is shown in the clock elapsed time from the invocation of the command until its termination. So when the command entered from there to the terminating of that up to that uh, how much time it has been taken as given under your real. So next what is the user time then? This is the time which shows the time spent by the program in executing itself. So here it, uh, whenever your program is at execution how much time it took that will be given by your user. So next is your system time which is indicates the time by the kernel in doing work on behalf of the user process. So this is the time taken which is used by your kernel in order to do all the works uh, whatever these commands are doing. So user process uh, whatever the user process is happening those time entire time which has been triggered by your kernel will be given by your system time okay so this is how you can tell how this time command is used so summing up our today's session that is we have seen like how to control the jobs that uh, bg fg jobs control z kill and also we use the atn batch in order to execute the letter or at a time it has to be run, then you can use it. Cron, which is running jobs periodically. Cron tab in order to creating a cron tab file. And also time, that is your timing process. So these are all the references which we have referred. And once again, thank you.